So myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition of the nervous system. And by autoimmune, we mean what when our body's immune system starts attacking its own cells. And in this particular condition, the antibodies that are produced attack the muscle end of the junction between your nerve and your muscle. What that means is that the signals from your brain that the nerve is trying to send to your muscle doesn't get through. So you start noticing weakness. And the more you use it, the weaker you feel. So myasthenia gravis can present in a wide variety of ways. One of the most common symptoms that you can have with myasthenia, and the one that most people do have, is involvement of the eyes. So you can have either droopy eyelids, and this can be just the one eyelid, or it can be both eyelids, and it can droop on its own accord. This is painless. The other eye symptom that you can have is double vision. People can also present with a wide variety of symptoms, which includes problems with speech, where you can slur your words or speak very nasally. You can have problems with swallowing. You can have problems with chewing. So you start tiring when you chew food like meats. You can have weakness of your neck with the head dropping down. You can have arm and leg weakness, and you can also have breathing difficulty. All of these can present together, or you can present with a combination of different symptoms, but the eye symptoms being the most common. So anybody can get myasthenia gravis. Um, studies have shown us that in the younger population, so less than 50 years age group, women are slightly more likely to get myasthenia than men. And in the older population, 50 and over, men are slightly more likely to get myasthenia. Studies have also shown that over the last few decades, the incidence of myasthenia is gradually increasing in the general population. We don't know why this is. But what we do know is that the increase is more commonly happening in the older population, that is the 50 and over. Myasthenia can happen at any time, and we don't know of any particular triggers that can cause it. The hypothesis is the same as with any other autoimmune condition in that we think that at some point, a viral infection has triggered our immune system to become a bit hyperactive. And this leads to our body producing antibodies which start attacking our own cells. So this is the hypothesis. There are no conclusive evidence to suggest that there is any particular infection that can trigger myasthenia more than others. And we don't have any environmental triggers either. The life expectancy in myasthenia gravis is very good. There is a slightly higher rate of mortality in patients with myasthenia gravis compared to someone who does not have myasthenia gravis. And this is usually in the first five years of diagnosis. And there's usually association with other comorbid conditions that the patient has. So when a patient is diagnosed with myasthenia, it's usually a diagnosis for life, but patients can definitely be symptom-free. Occasionally, this can happen without any treatment, but more often than not, patients become symptom-free when they've been treated, what is called as pharmacological remission. And this is the aim of managing myasthenia gravis. 